All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dave and Joe Show. Right here, we got Brock and Dave Byron, and R2R3 is back again. Thank you, R2, man. Yes, sir. (laughs) Awesome. I think this is the first time uh, Brock and Dave and R2 has had a chance to meet. Yeah, Yeah. man. Virtually. And it's so so cool, man, because, you know, R2 lives in Chicago. I'm from Chicago, and there's a lot of history right there, man. That is That's awesome, sure, man. That That's is totally sure. awesome. And, and a lot you know, of uh, stomping grounds that we've uh, played through in oh the club my scene God. here. How about it? We used to have so many back in the day, man, and they, a lot of them dried up, of course. You Absolutely, know, like, yeah. Um, but you remember those days in the late oh. '80s, early '90s, going into the 2000s? It was booming in yep. Chicago. It, it booming. was booming, man. It was booming. I remember when uh, Metro was originally Tuts, and I used to live right yeah. down the street from the Metro. And okay. Touch <clears throat> was originally, excuse me, it was originally on Belmont Avenue. And yeah. then it moved to uh, the location on Clark Street. Yep. And then you had the smart bar underneath there. And yeah. Deb, now this is before I met Deb, her and her business partner, they had, they did a, a show there. They were running sound. And she said, never again. You go down to the smart bar and you could literally hear your feet peel off the floor because no one ever mopped the floor. <laughs> oh, That's God. Yeah. <laughs> There's layers and layers of beer spillage on that. Oh, my God. <laughs> unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah, it says uh, awesome to meet you in person, dude. I've uh, talked to you in the chat, and we know each yeah. other through the community here. But uh, this is this is great, man. This, this is great, great Artu. This is totally great, man. I've always been a fan of yours. And, of course, Thank Joe. I- I'll tell you what, man. This community has really been building on, on solid ground, building solid friendship, and keeping the guitar community alive. And the guitar, right, man. We, and know, keeping it I, real, man. Everyone real, has man. Their, each other's talent and uh, showcasing. Yeah. And it, uh, we get together and we talk about our own likes and dislikes and so forth. But we, we gel together as a community. We gel, yep. Great. And, you know, and, and there's, there is absolutely nothing wrong with having – you know, um, a friendly disagreement. Well, I, that, I'm, I'm not into that, but that's okay. You're into that now because when you bring everything at, together as a whole, it's what serves the whole community. Everything well, coexists yeah. with each other. It needs. It's you know, funny you mentioned that because my wife said that the other day when I went over to my, my friend's house and, uh, you know, she said, uh, no matter what you guys talk about, whether, whatever the topic is, you get, you may disagree, but mm-hmm. at the end of the night, you guys walk away, hugging each other, shaking hands, right. and everybody. Exactly. It was like a, uh, it was just a great hangout to talk and dispute, but because no one left angry, and uh, right. that's the way I see that's the way it. we hang out here. Is uh, that's the way it should be, man? Even well, though certain yeah. people may dislike a certain instrument or whatnot. Exactly. Don't even get upset, man. Just move on. Oh, no. yeah. Be happy and share the love of uh, gear. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I mean, right now I, we just got back from the grocery shop and then prior to that, we were doing a gig celebrating the 50th anniversary of Woodstock. Yes. And yes, it was pretty, yes. pretty wild. Yeah. Right. That is <laughs> awesome. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. I sent yeah. Joe that DVD right there of the uh, multiple Woodstock. versions of the Woodstock yes. with Jimmy Hendrix. Oh yes. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's some awesome oh, yeah, stuff absolutely. there, man. One Holy of my favorites. Crap. One of my favorites. Absolutely. Yeah. That, so what's that, happening with everybody? That location, oh, not much, man. Just chilling out and had some Chinese food a while ago. That location, let me get back to that Woodstock. Yeah. Is yeah. That, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, when, when uh, of course, well, that was, what, in 69, there was yeah. a, wasn't there a, a farmer who had that land? And they yeah, he had that land. They leased it from him for that weekend or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and he remember Originally- se- seeing the footage when they all left, it was like a, a bomb had went off there. Oh, so, man. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, my God. Could you imagine cleaning up that crap? Oh, man. Holy I, cow, I, man. I was like, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I couldn't imagine, man. But that uh, those individuals that did that may have known you know, that that was going to be history in the making there. Who knows? That's just man. it. Yeah, that's just it. And, and originally, Deb and I watched the documentary, and it was from a different perspective. It was more on – on the perspective of the investment, the two guys that yeah. teamed up with the other guys, they're the ones that had the money, but they had no experience. And originally it was supposed to be at another location. 
So yeah. what they did, I guess they went like to the Chamber of Commerce and they had this big meeting and, you know, I, I remember a lot of this, the strong conservative side, I mean, super strong conservative. You know, you're coming out of the 50s, going into the 60s, and then you have, you know, everyone's getting stoned and everything. So a lot of the people at the Chamber of Commerce and at this, this committee meeting, they said, no way do we want all those drugged out hippies around on right. this property. So they found another area with the guy with the farmer. Yeah. And uh, he was cool about it. You know, he got on stage and he said, he, he said, this is so great to see. Uh, I don't know, it was like 400,000 young yeah. folks getting together to serve a cause and just having a good time and there's no trouble or anything like that. And it, it really proved to the world that, yeah, it could be done. And like you said, Artu, they didn't realize it was history in the making. Yeah, yeah. Have any Have any one of y'all been to that location by any chance just to see where it? No, no I've never, no. Yeah. I've never, I've never been to the whole New York. Now, Deb, she's been to New York, but I've never been to New York. And uh, it would be kind of cool to go there and just, even if you take a video, you know, just walking through that area. There's a small yeah. museum there. Uh, uh, I want to say um, I saw it on YouTube. I think there's a little museum there for uh, uh, in tribute for Woodstock. I think they have like an old bus from then that's painted up. It's in there and all kind of artifacts. Probably. All, all kind of cool stuff. I'd love to see that. I would love to see it because uh, I think the actual where it took place was uh, they called it Woodstock, but it, that wasn't the town it was performed in. It was somewhere right. else. It was supposed to be in the, I think the town of Woodstock and that's yeah. where they had that issue with, right. uh, and I mean, these guys, they had the money and they were just taking a chance on it. But right. what happened was they ran, let's see, they were selling tickets and they ran out of money to finish building the fence. So what happened is there was X amount of tickets that got sold and then people just started coming in and coming in and coming in and they, yeah. it got bigger. So they just said, how would it, let's just have a free festival. Yeah. Free yeah. festival. So, Whoever paid, yeah. paid. And then, mm -hmm. and that's what, that's what brings on your, uh, Lollapaloozas. And I say that because we have it here in Chicago, man. Grand Park. Oh, yeah. Uh, where Lollapalooza comes in, and it's a three-day festival. And my daughter's like, I just want to see this band. And I'm like, yeah, but you got to pay for the whole three-day festival. <laughs> it's like crazy. Woodstock. It's, and it's crazy, yeah. It's of dollars because you're paying for all these artists. And she just yep. goes, well, I just want to see this individual. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's it'll be on YouTube. <laughs> it'll be on yeah, YouTube. Yeah. That's what I said to her. And she's like, yeah. "No, I want to experience it." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's and and uh, I wouldn't mind going to it, but it's it's a, it's another Woodstock festival, man. It's, it's yeah, the modern age then, Woodstock festival. You know, R two. You know how the the driving and the parking is downtown Chicago. Oh, forget yeah, it, no. man. Oh, I would take so, the train. I take yeah, the train. you definitely take the train. Mm. And that, yeah, oh I'd yeah, take the train here from the suburbs of. Uh, uh, Roselle, and I'll yep. take it down to downtown. Yeah, yeah, downtown, and then you just get on the L, and it'll take you right down off of uh, you know Michigan Avenue. That's a, that's the beauty of Chicago. That's There's what I mean. Different uh, yeah. different ways of getting around without having to use your own car, because uh, as Dave knows, is if you don't know the areas you're going into, you might wind <laughs> up with uh, no tires in your car. If you know. What I'm oh saying. man. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Oh, boy. There used to be a rehearsal <laughs> studio. You, you got that right, R2. You find your car on blocks. Is the, is on the blocks. Term here. Yeah. Exactly, man. Cinder blocks. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. These individuals that take your tires have cinder blocks with them. <laughs> to yeah, where did they get your car? <laughs> Interesting. Well, you know how they got the cinder blocks? It was someone's garage that they smashed, so it's <laughs> part of the garage yeah, wall. So they wheeled, with a wheel I always barely. wondered about that. I'm like, man, I see these cars on cinder blocks, and you, your tires are gone, rims and everything, and you go, yeah, where do they get the cinder blocks? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you know, it's it's a trip, man. It is a trip. You know, down here, the the the, the shocking thing down here is there's certain areas. There's a lot of canals. So you'll be driving, and to get across the street, you can't because there's a canal. So now you got to backtrack and you either go a quarter mile or a half a mile. 
and it just it screws up your whole driving day and it takes oh, a while wow. to get used to man oh yeah and especially yeah. early morning or at night time oh, you better have your lights on because there's certain areas there's no lights down there yeah you know wind up in the swamp or dude, something yeah you're driving all of a sudden you gotta stop and all of a sudden it's like holy crap it's a canal and you don't know what's in that water man uh, a lot of gators down there boy <laughs> dude <laughs> Dave, Dave gets the eight gators and we get the elk and the uh, deer. So yeah, here. man, crossing the road. I'm going to tell well, you. We, well, another thing, crossing the road down here, there's bears and there's a there's a street called Daniel's Parkway. And as I'm driving, they got all these signs. It'll say Panther Crossing. They got all the Panthers down there. Whoa. What? Dude. Yeah, yeah, man. And, it, and it's not the football team either. <laughs> no, it's not the football team, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're going down south bro i'll tell you it's it's like a jungle down here man holy crap and then we got these we got the get goes but you got these big ass you know cockroaches they're, they call them palmetto bugs but oh, they fly they're, bro they probably yeah. fly right yeah they fly man one yeah, was we, on our screen, and I went to hit it, and boom, it flew right back up into the palm tree. Yeah, we got them big old cockroaches too, man. It's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it, humidity brings out the worst in just about anything when you deal yeah, with a lot of humidity it and stuff. It's just horrible. Hey, Dave, did you have a gig today, man? Yep, we were in a town called Punta Gorda, which is a half hour north of us, and I just booked it on a whim. I figure I'll call them, you know, and they'll. They'll probably say, okay, well, send us a CD or send us a YouTube video and then go through this chain of command and that chain of command. I talked with the manager and she says, okay, August August 17th, you're on. I'm like, okay, this is easy. You see, R2, is the guy United Talents, is he still doing the bookings in Chicago? See, I don't know, man. Okay. You, you know, it's been so long since I, you know. Yeah. I if you have friends. Big here. Yeah. Mentioned the name Joey DeMarco. He was the one. Yeah. He was like he used one to, the name. Yeah. Right. He was the one back in the day that you had to yeah. deal with. And you know what that meant when you had to deal with him. It's like pulling teeth, man. It's like, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's like, uh, we're not talking about any mafia shit here, guys. So. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. We can talk, we can talk whatever we whatever y'all want. Oh, oh, yeah. We're going to talk about breaking legs or anything, okay? Yeah. Yeah, and, put, and taking the cinder blocks off the cars, and there's a cement too, and then they throw you into the Chicago River, you know. It's okay now, man, because right now, uh, anywhere anywhere I walk through the streets of Chicago, man, I mention the Reverend and everybody. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Lucretia. Hey, so, so Joe, how's Lucretia doing? How's your sister doing, man? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, I, I hauled ass. I had to get man. That, that woman got hold of me. She, hey, Joe changed his number, oh, man. That's why we can't get a hold of him. Me, she's like, "Come on, honey." I was like, "Oh hell no!" And, uh, I mean, I started, I started drinking some Gatorade, man. Cause I had to get me some. Yeah, had, it's got electrolytes. Some, it made you have to run out of there quick. I had to get me some strength built up, man. Out of money, that woman went playing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's funny. Oh, that's uh, funny. I, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm glad they left me alone. I guess she finally started messing with some other poor soul. I'm like, man, <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, I can't. I'm Somebody like, dropped a hundred dollar <laughs> bill on the floor, and she went, "Hey, that's what it is." <laughs> she, 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 she goes, "Hey, she, grab that sucker." She was like, uh, "She was like Medea." She, uh, <laughs> she said she had to go hit that stripper pole. I said, "Good luck, cause that stripper pole is gonna break." It's going to bend. She'll have a bend. Oh, buddy. Holy crap. I, I got to go hit that pole. I was like, yeah, you're going you're gonna to hit a car is what you're going to do. I mean, <laughs> Part of the ceiling structure breaks, and yeah. you've got drywall coming down on you and everything. <laughs> oh, we God. Need, we need security in here right away. Right here. <laughs> but, uh, no, I wanted to say this, man. I wanted to say this to y'all because I thought you might find this interesting. Um, Ever since I got this little small piece of gear right here into my arsenal, I've had what you it got for. There? What you got there? This yeah. is the this is the Zoom G One X Four, okay, and this unit costs ninety nine dollars. Now this expression expression pedal only works if you have one of the effects engaged for 
the X, the pedal. You see what I mean? So yeah. If, if it's not, if it's not engaged and you know, you can do it like this and it's not going to hurt nothing. Yeah, on, one of my, on one of my old, uh, like my Digitech RP 1000. Peekaboo. Oh, my Digitech <laughs> RP 1000. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you hit this, whatever it'll engage. And I never was crazy yeah. about that. I didn't like that because sometimes you could use it as you know, as a wah or a volume, yep. right? Or volume. And if yeah. you, but if you hit it too much, it would click into, oh. the, uh, into the other. And I was like, I, yeah. I never liked that. So, but this here, I always use my Vox Y. I don't, I don't use this. I got it just in case I wanted to. Right. But I'm going to tell you, man, and I'm not, I'm not endorsed by anybody, but uh, except for, you know, that's, that's not what for, I read in the description here, but anyways, except, go ahead. Ex except for the, <laughs> the reverend, you know, but not, there and, you uh, go. <laughs> Creature girl, but uh, <laughs> so this um, right here is amazing, man. If you get a chance to try one of these, it's in um, you know, between yeah, y'all and, and me and everybody watching, this is uh, I've been using this since I got it. I have not touched my Yamaha. I've that been, really, I've that's been using this ever really, since. yeah. Now that's saying something, and I'm and I'm not, wow, I haven't, dude, that Yamaha has been doing yeah. wonders I have not, for me, man. I have not abandoned it, don't get me wrong, but the setup with this is just for what I'm doing is so simple and just, you know, I got That's great from my guitar into this That's good. and man. I come, well, you know, guitar. I'm going to have to check that out because you're, 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 you're talking to, you know, Dave, you remember zoom from back in the, Oh um, man, the two thousands and everything. Yeah. And, they came man. out with that. It was a, the first zoom that came out was a little square thing. Yeah. That you could put on your, your, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Your guitar strap. Your guitar and strap. Actually, oh, the black one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The black one had the yep. three. And actually, had the three sliding knobs on it. Yeah, yeah. the three mm -hmm. sliding knobs, and yeah. they were the first ones that came out with the idea yes. that you could go directly into a, a PA. There you go. A mixing Thank board. You. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had that. that's why I'm like, dude, I remember those things. But I had that. Yeah, I had that. Back I then, the technology wasn't that great, so no. your the sound quality turned off a lot of people. I remember, like Dave Mustaine had like a signature yeah. Zoom pedal. And, yeah, yeah. Yep. But I'm gonna, but I'm yep. gonna tell you, but I'm gonna tell you, man, this right here, and uh, by the time everybody watches this, the premiere will be over. But there was there was uh, there was a premiere on uh, Saturday, which uh, this is the same night we're recording this show right here. But on that whole premiere, on every song, I'm using this. That's incredible. So, so if yeah, you, here, uh, I thought you were using the Yamaha, man. Well, I, I mean, like yeah. I said, I haven't. I haven't used it in a while because I got this in some of the settings. Now, of course, it's just like any other processor, especially with the Zoom. You get some of those little kind of cheesy little weird spaced out effects, and I'm like, well, who, who's going to who's going to use that? Who's going to use you that? You know, but uh, there's the ones that are that are great quality, <laughs> man. Oh my god, I was like, damn, that sounds good for what it is, you know. And uh, oh yeah, so I come out of my guitar and I got a small uh, pedal board, like three or four pedals into the zoom out of that into the uh my uh, pedals after that after which, which which would be my you know reverbs you know r2 the one you gave me their uh tc electronic reverb yeah. and then and a couple of delay units and then i go into either the laptop or you know wherever i'm recording but the setup is just like boom 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 and you're done and it's just this is convenient See, that's man. Good, good convenience good. You know? And you know, Joe, you can run that thing with uh, four AA batteries. Yes, they, and, and, they, and they come with the unit. There's a, it's the knockoff batteries, but they, I actually and, had an adapter uh, laying around here that fit it, so I've been using that adapter. But yeah, the batteries are in, uh, inserted, and it works, man. I'm telling you. I mean, God Almighty, dude, you'd be surprised to take that, uh, to, like what what Dave's doing, these gigs and stuff. I mean, man, you put it, just set it on the floor, and yep, you're you good to go. Pedals, man, you're good, and it's yeah. like. I was like, damn, you know, we were like, doing so many of these gigs guys that um, that's why we have some of the battery powered uh, PA speakers. Now, okay. A lot of it was these high end wedding gigs, but I was able to do my thing. And that was really cool. And it got to the point where um, one of the guys that has uh, Victoria amplifiers, he's out of Chicago or two. Okay. Um, I yeah, forget the Victoria, guy's name. Yeah. Yeah, Victoria amplifiers. A uh, matter of fact, uh, Buddy Guy was using them for a while. Well, I was one of the judges at Guitar Center's uh, King of the Blues um, competition. Oh. So this guy was sitting next to me. We were talking up a storm, and I said, "I love, you know, I love the way your amp sound and that." 
And then I asked him, I said, have you ever thought of starting another division with these battery powered amps? And he says, no, that's not my thing. I says, well, if you ever decide to, there is another sector in music that people never talk about that these people, I mean, think about it. If you're doing any type of a high-end corporate gig or a wedding gig, these people are going to pay you. There's no question about it. It's not like a bar gig where you're chasing money. You will get paid top dollar. And I said, so when the musicians get paid top dollar, now we're the ones that's buying all this gear. And I, I told him, I said, this is another area that is definitely happening. And he says, wow, I never realized that. So that's why I said it with the, with the uh, Zoom pedal. And if you grab in any type of a powered PA, because that'll go through a powered PA speaker. Yes. Anything with battery powered, you just set up, drop in, you're good to go, man. And you, you could move around anywhere. Whereas you wow. don't have to look for an outlet or anything like that, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I want to share this with you guys. I, I tried that Helix. I was at Guitar Center the other day. And oh, so yeah. So I plugged in, yeah, I plugged into the big monster Helix. And I... They had it set where you got to like read the manual and go through all the settings to get into different, you know, parameters and the other banks and patches. So I didn't really have much time to mess with that. But the sound that was set up was for the um, plexiglass. And I was, yeah. I was really impressed with it. But it sounded like, it, actually, I just stumbled on the beginning of Hell's Bells. Oh, it was like an A minor chord and just started messing with it. The tone was right there. I mean, like right there, but it's right there off the album. And what a lot of these people don't tell you is that when you listen to the final product on an album, you're listening to a, the, the mix down and the mastering. And right. when you go through mix down and mastering, you know how it is. You're going through a lot of EQ settings, a lot of compression, and that just to get everything. You're not going to have it where it's just raw. Um, the way it sounds like, like coming out of the amp. The, the yeah, speaker it's not going to be like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. everything's processed. Yeah. yeah, it's processed, which is not a bad thing if you're doing if you're in a tribute band like a Vegas type tribute band where you have to get it as close to the actual recording as possible. Not a bad deal there. So I plugged in after that. I plugged into the. Uh, the Boss GT1000, and actually both of these pedals, they were hooked up to that Headrush uh, powered speaker. So they were both sharing the same speaker. They had the Headrush, but it was on, it just wasn't plugged in, so I didn't mess with that. So the GT1000 is about five to $600 cheaper than the Helix, and it's a smaller platform. Yeah. If you're familiar with Boss products, it's so oh, easy yeah. to get oh, your yeah. way around. And I'll tell you what, the sound on their Plexi versus the Helix was not too far off. Plus, you got all these other settings you were real simple to go through that are usable, kind of like synthesizer sounds, but they don't sound cheesy. Actually, yeah. they were getting their synthesizer sounds off of this. This is the GR55. Oh, but okay. see, with yeah. this, you need a 13-pin cord. And I've had uh -huh. people ask me, well, you just get a MIDI chord. I said, no, 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 no. A ah, MIDI chord is hard. five pins. Yeah. You got to have the 13 pin. Um, and if you don't have that cable and a gig, you're screwed. Yeah, yep. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now it was it was Perfect really cool. Bad. Yeah, if, oh, I've had one go bad. Exactly. I've had yeah. one go bad. And then the pickup on it, the wiring is literally like old telephone. You remember the old telephone wires coming out of the wall? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know how thin that wire is? Yeah. That's the type of wiring that's hooked up from the pickup to the controller. Easy mm. to break, yep. man. Mm. Yeah, I believe it, man. Well, and for all that money, what you got there, Joe, and like using uh, cheaper stuff, I, I mean, that's great stuff. But I honestly, to spend fifteen or 1600 bucks, and then today it rained. So we had to stop our gig for a little bit and I had to throw towels over the pedal. Would you take a $1,600 Pedal out and then it yeah, rang. the helix. You know oh. what I mean? No, I have no. a heart attack. No, I, I, that, your that, for helix floor pedal just getting sopping wet. See, oh. that's that's something I've always uh, yep. tried to do ever since I've been dabbling around with recording and uh, video and stuff on YouTube and everything else. The, my main thing is what is the best audio I can get without spending yeah. a boatload of money and and 
you know, it's, it's not hard to find if you just do a little research, you know, and word Especially of mouth, nowadays. word of mouth helps out a lot too. Yeah. I mean, and like R2 said, not everybody is going to agree on the same thing. We know that everybody, oh, yeah. everybody likes different stuff, but uh, <clears throat> you know, for somebody like me, who's a musician that's, that's on a strict budget, um, I just happened to come across this uh, on my YouTube feed about a, about a month ago. And I was like, okay. oh, I was like, oh, Zoom's got a new thing going on here. So, you know, Zoom had did a few videos of their own. And uh, I was like, they, of course, they had it going direct, you know, into the thing. I was like, man, God, mighty, that sounds incredible, you know. And uh, so, you know, y'all, you guys have been playing long enough to know when you hear a great tone, it catches your ear like that. When you hear it, you're like, whoa, shit, that sounds badass. You know, yeah. it's a. Uh, it's not like it was when you first started and you had like this little crate amp and a pedal and you're like, yeah, that sounds yeah. cool. I mean, you know, now you've matured as a musician in your, in your uh, tone and with your ears and everything, it, it matures as well. And, um, so that's what I love. You know, I love, I love, uh, I love that very much. That's gotta, awesome, man. I didn't know that. See, you didn't say anything uh, unless you put it in the description. I didn't read it, but uh, I assumed that was the Yamaha. I thought you maybe use uh, another her uh, preset or something. Nah, and, and like I said, I uh, and like I said, I I love my Yamaha THR 10 X. I don't, I, I love it. It's it's great uh, for what I use in here. But you know, when I did that video, when I when I the video I did when you take the music outside, that video yeah. I did, and I went outside and I played uh, some Def Leppard, right? Yeah, I saw that was awesome. Thank you. When I went outside, I used the Zoom, and that's really why I got it because I'm like, I don't want to take this Yamaha outside, you know, because it was, you know, I just I want to leave it inside. So yeah. I, I was like, I need yeah. to find something cool. that sounds close, uh, that I felt sounded close. Uh, of course, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, there's an interruption tone on the Zoom. Uh, I ain't gonna lie to you, it's it's not really that close. You, know, you, can, you, can, you can tell you can tell they tried it's got the little phase right effect i love when you do that you listen to us uh they call it a certain description you go yeah i'm like nah i said no nah, that's not that's not too good now there is a univibe Jimi hendrix tone on here that's dead on it sounds yeah nice. i heard that that it was is, really cool spot on i was like oh my god and uh so you know you get a little back and forth with it you know you're going to get some really great ones and you're going to get some like i said that are kind of eh, no nah, yeah. but 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 it's okay i mean the good stuff outweighs the bad in my opinion See, that's a, yep now can you take yeah. the effects and rearrange them in the chain yes you can now that's that's you, awesome you can you can rearrange them you can actually uh let me see if i can pick this back up here um if i can look at this backwards uh See, and this these, is probably Zoom's answer to this whole Helix. If, and if you stop. see, it is yep. on, a, on a far as a budget model. Now, here you see each button. These squares are represent your pedals. You see right there. Okay. One, yeah. two, three, four, five. So when you turn this on, and you know it's powered on, and you go to uh, select. Let me just make sure I'm hitting right. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Right here, you go to wow. edit, edit, and that's going to bring up your effects and what order they're in. It'll show on the screen. And then if you want to mute an effect, you hit the button or whatever. Or if you want to fine tune each effect. So if you want more right. gain on it or less gain, or if you want to change uh, the delay setting, or if you want to whatever, whatever effects mm -hmm. it offers in that on this one setting, you can, uh, you can fine tune it how you want. And I've That's done cool. that a little bit. And I was like, uh, I was like, man, now it's got a built in looper. The looper is just a basic, you know the it's, yeah. it's, the looper is pretty good for what it is. Now the drums are just like, yeah, just I mean the, the drums don't don't yeah. get don't expect you know you know don't expect nothing major out of that. John Bonham. Yeah, you're not getting that. <laughs> you're getting probably John Smith. Oh, by the way, <laughs> <too>. yeah, John, <laughs> John Smith. <laughs> so, you know, so, so, but uh, but 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 far as far as um, far as uh, being able to rearrange the effects and fine tune them how you want yes you can do that and see that's, uh, that's brilliant right there because it's basically what they're they're taking this approach just like we did with pedals you know you can just rearrange yeah, them yeah. and you start getting these different uh tones because like when hendrix used the univibe if i'm not mistaken 
you know, he had his marshals crank. Because see, back then, you didn't have master volume. You didn't right. have high gain or anything. Right. So the louder it would, it would just naturally distort. So he either ran his guitar into his wah pedal and then into the fuzz face and then the univibe or the wah pedal, the univibe, and the fuzz face. So how I have, how I have my um, univibe settings on the Digitech, I'll have it where it will go through a little bit of a dirty amp because that's how you get that. You can get that close to the Hendrix and Robin Trower swirling sound. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. And that's, that's why... Yeah. You know, you you get that, but it sounded badass. I'll tell you that, man. Yeah, this is a great little unit, man. I mean, I'm I've always been about trying to find something to because what it does for me, and I'm sure it's for you guys as well. Oh, it, yeah, it influences you. You know, when you get a a, yep. a new uh, a new set of tones or whatever, and you're like, oh man, let me see if I can write a song. You know, let me see if I can. You know, it just I don't know, man. For me, it just jazzes me up. You know, oh yeah. Because uh, even though, don't get me wrong, I love the tones on my Yamaha and all that, and it's the closest to the Van Halen sound I've ever had, and ever, probably ever will have for my budget. You know, and yep. it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, but for being able to set up real quick outside, like I said, uh, the Zoom G One X Four man is perfect for me. You know, and it's you know honestly, that's guys. Awesome, man. Um, and I, I'm sure you know because you gigged out there too, Joe. So. You know, you you and R2, you guys know, um, nothing really has changed too much in the uh, gigging world as far as you get there, you got to set up. It's like you got to maximize your time so that you can perform. Yes, yes. And then yes. at the end of the gig, you know, you're burned out, you're tired, and now you got to take all this stuff. Oh, and man. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you real quick, I, I just to to uh, agree on your point because I remember when we would get set up and when it was just a duo. Now this is when, and mm -hmm. Dave, you know how that is more than anybody. When it was just a duo, me and a, a, a another buddy, my name was Walter. We would get to the thing and all he'd have to do, he had the easiest part for us setting up and breaking down. All he had was a, a microphone <laughs> and he had a cable. That was it. That was it. So he, he had click, 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 three things to hook up. He was done in five yeah. minutes or less and here i am hooking all my stuff up you know getting all this and that and then when it come time to tear down he was done you know boop, boop, he was done you know and so yeah it's it's you know if I, if I can put stuff together like that and do whatever and uh, that's what it's all about but like we said before man that's where it's at is is here on youtube you know? oh yeah guys and you will oh, see yeah you will see some stuff coming soon on this channel with what we're talking about if you've been paying attention you will see uh, Dave knows what I'm talking about as I've shared it with him, but, uh, yep. there are going to be a couple of changes here, uh, not changes, but something different to see. Maybe that's and, uh, great, man. I'm so just, looking forward for it. We're, uh, we're, uh, got a few more bugs to work out and then, but when it's here, baby, it's going to be here. Call the exterminator, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's going to be fun. It's something I've been thinking about for a while. I just haven't, I've been thinking in my mind how to put it together and how to do it and then of course the money aspect because it you know to get that stuff you know i have to go buy it you know it yeah like, it's not like i can just you know call the music fairy and you know oh no man can you no, bring that I, stuff over here i mean you know you just gotta <laughs> no it's not like that yeah there you go like i dream of genie right <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, where's the other one yeah yeah <laughs> or the other one she wiggle her nose and everything happens that right? was bewitched yeah that was bewitched. Yeah, that was bewitched. <laughs> oh man, Samantha. Yeah, Samantha. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, it, it. I had a friend of mine, a uh, vocalist, I was working with in Chicago. Then later on, he had a uh, radio show called the Chicago J Show. Okay. Uh, spotlighting all metal and a lot of the local metal. He came over because he wanted to do some recording because we got a we got a ton of recording gear. One day I'm going to do a video and just plop up my gear and then you'll see all the crap that we got. It's like, okay, it's nice, but the reality is a lot of it's almost worthless. You know what I mean? Because things evolve and yeah, value drops. Change. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I told him he literally wanted to take money out of his 401k and buy all this crap because he oh. thought I went one day and bought everything. I says, no, it took uh, over a course of time. It took years. You know? Oh, yeah, it yeah. takes years. Man, yeah. this stuff ain't cheap. No. You know? No. Nah. Right, right. It's I like hear you, man. It's like the gear I have. Yeah. Yeah. 
And R2 You've got had, a lot of gear. Oh, R2, yeah. Yeah, R2 had all that rat gear. He still has a lot of rat gear, I believe. Don't you, R2? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all the accumulation. I, I mean, I sold a lot of it, but, yeah, my, some of my close friends know the – the process of how long, it, how many years yeah. it took. It, oh, I, I look at it as almost like my garage with all the tools yeah. I have. Yeah. As years go right. by, you keep on building tools. When people walk in your garage, you go, what? You bought this all at once? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's right. what I used to do. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm like, damn, this son of a bitch got some money. You know, that's what I was, <laughs> when I was a kid. I'm you, like, man. Right. No. You know what? Now when you look at it, like, okay, sometimes we do these shows down here in Cape Coral, and you got, they'll set me up, and right behind me, you got all these yachts. Everyone's got a yacht down here. And some of these people are cool about it, but some of them, boy, they like to go on that brag fest, you know? Mm. And I told this one guy, I says, I'll tell you what, when I look at that yacht, that's nice. But honestly, with the hurricanes down here, Ooh. the insurance on that thing, I would never want to have one because I'll tell you what, either you really have all that money or you're living on credit. And sooner or later, that card's going to be maxed out. Card number two, three, four, and five, and six are going to be maxed out. And then when all this hits you at once, then you're going to be in big time trouble financially. Or, or get on that boat and keep sailing. <laughs> yep, you get the hell out of Dodge, I right? do. <laughs> he went on a three-hour tour or somewhere. Went, yeah. 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 <laughs> Hop on that. Holy crap. Hop on that ship and keep sailing, bro. With the problem here, you keep sailing. If the wind blows you the wrong way, you're going to land in Cuba. And then Castro's brothers could get your ass in this. Hey, guess what? We, we closed sanctions of the U.S., man. You're oh, so well. You're on your own. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bro, you're you're all, he'll have to call the rev then he won't have a choice <laughs> oh yeah. said lucretia and her sister down here the rest they of his can, ass i bet they can handle it <laughs> oh they will handle it because any guy in their right mind will be like oh let's get out of here oh run run <laughs> and don't look back don't look back man I remember those times i had to hit that pole i was like oh, <laughs> oh my god no but my, oh no, yeah. my god uh, but yeah now, dave Dave, yeah. if, you, if you had your choice, because you've been down there for what, a little over a year now? Yeah, now it's it's two years we've been down oh, here. Two, I'm sorry. Okay, my, my well, bad. Yeah, uh, if, right. you, if you had your choice, do you like having the the uh, variety of the gigs, uh, like the with the bar gigs and the wedding things and the corporate thing, or would you rather have just one type of gig to do all the time? I guess now I'm I'm getting more and more just do like one type of gig. I mean, but you see, I have a lot of different versatility, you know. Uh, so if if it was be my choice, I would pick like for our program called Guitar Heroes. That's all the rock and the metal and and celebrating all the classic guitarists that you know, great gravest great music. And then I also like the jazz fusion and the classical guitar, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but right. but you know when you when you join these these cover bands and I'm not knocking them, but the the problem that I see with everybody not everybody I don't mean this in, in an insulting way because I I give them a lot of credit man, but the problem is is that you meet you get together with musicians and right away they they'll they'll actually say I want to play this song that song because I want to please everybody and I says okay, we all have to do songs that we don't really like. <laughs> but if you pick every song that you don't like, it's not going to take long for you. When you hit that stage, you'll be the, the, your first song that you start playing. You can't wait until it's your last song because you can't stand anything you're doing. And it's so bad, especially down here. And, and in Key West, man, some of these people, they don't look like they even want to be there. And it's so bad. Even the general public that don't even play, they don't un understand anything about guitar. This one guy said to me, he goes, man, those people playing, they don't look like they're having fun, but you, you, you look like you're having fun. And I said, there's nothing wrong with pleasing everybody, but then those are called politicians, and you're going to wind up pleasing nobody. We had yeah. one gig that we were doing, literally, as we were playing, and there was a group of people that was getting into what we were doing, and they're spending their money, buying drinks and that. The club owner comes up because he wants to see the girls dance. You know, he's an old pervert. He wants to see the boobs. Right? <laughs> so he comes up as we're playing. He goes, well, could you guys play something danceable? I'm like, wait a minute. 
you know, we're playing. They're having a good time. You know, let hey, the song. Can that girl hold the camera, start dancing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's like, <laughs> it's like these people don't know what they want. They just want everything all at once. And they're like, well, why don't you get a jukebox, man? You know what I mean? Or a DJ push the, you know, push the the, the they push hey, the play can button. The uh, lead singer put on those leather chaps. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what, guys, is you get some of these old ladies down here, man. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, so, man. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what. You know, down here, all right, Florida Florida has another name. They call it God's Waiting Room because you got all these seniors down here, right? But they're not ready to kick the bucket. So, so they're, they're, <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> so in their mind, they think they're 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get these guys. When Joe hit the panic button. Oh, dude, their, their bellies are hanging out, and some of these ladies, everything's hanging out, and they don't care. Especially in Key West, man. Holy crap! I'm like, I told Deb, I said, these people think they're teenagers again. And I mean, they're literally acting like this. Yes, please, t Dave, tell me that you're staying away from the nude beach colony down there. Oh yeah. Oh oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I, I just, trust me. I don't want. Oh, I don't want to see that. Dave's next gig. I do not want to see that. Nobody man. under eighty. They gonna, yeah. the women gonna be over here. We gonna make it rain up in here, bitch. Like, oh, yes. no, no. <laughs> no, 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 Dave's no, like, no. my next song is uh, yeah. Magada de Vito. Yeah, yeah. Let me, hey, where's let me that? get out of here. Yeah, she stayed home. She didn't want to see that. And then these, <laughs> then these people, dude, they'll come in with their walkers and they'll start arguing with each other. And the profanity, oh, oh. dude, where you were on a job site. I mean, I heard, I hear worse profanity come out of their mouth than some of the drop when I worked on the construction <laughs> site. Oh, my God. And then your teeth will fall out of their head. <laughs> dude, it's, it's unbelievable. Man. Wow. <laughs> Holy! Yeah, that, it's that a happens when you're headbanging, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Although they'll headbang a little bit, and then they're like, "Oh man, my neck is hurting me." <laughs> oh. I know if, if they take the wrong pill and it happens to be a Viagra and it's stuck in their throat, then their oh. neck. Is, you know what I mean? That's all right. Oh, hey, old man. guy who be called tripod then. Yeah. Oh, here's another thing. So I, <laughs> dude, I have. <laughs> I have never heard as many ED commercials on the radio in my life as I have heard them down here. I mean, there's all these clinics with ED, right? And low pain. Right now, and low right now Joe's <laughs> looking at the producer going like this. Got it, got it, got it. Oh. And then we have another guy. He's a car dealer. You ain't going to believe this. Oh, so on, we get no. down here and we'll, we'll turn on your pants. <laughs> Oh, dude, this dude's a trip, man, because he, he sounds like an old pervert trying to sell you all these kiosks. Oh, no. So, Ugh. literally, we're watching. He's got this one girl next to him, and then um, another girl walks by in a miniskirt, and he literally is on TV. He's doing this. Oh, I got to check this out. Oh, and then he no. tells on the radio, the one girl that's a sidekick, I guess she left a while, and then she came back, and her name's Caroline. So he says to Caroline, she, uh, she claims she went to join the uh, nurse, the monastery or whatever the hell it is. So he says to her, I'm glad that you're back, Caroline. So let me ask you a question. What would you rather be doing? Being in the vestibules, praying with the nuns, or selling kiosks? I'd rather be selling kiosks. What would you rather be doing, Caroline? Uh, sleeping at 2 o'clock in the morning or having me drag you and pick you up off the bar stool at 2 o'clock in the morning? Oh, what? He said, yeah, he literally says that on the radio commercials. Oh, what? God, what man. the hell? Oh, my then, God. Dude, would you ever buy a car from somebody that maybe, you know, you, you go there with you know your what? wife? That's how you know. You know what? You got poor credit? Go to that guy. You go to that guy, man. <laughs> and then he'll give you, he'll give that's you like, a That's a cold word for go to that dude for no credit, man. <laughs> that's it. We're wheeling that's and true. dealing down here at Jake's Auto. Oh my God! It's un. It's just, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And then they'll give you a kayak. They'll give you a cruise. You go a cru on a cruise with this guy. Sure. He's a pervert. And right. He's, with the all alligators. You do. You, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You go down Alligator <laughs> Alley with this dude, and then next thing you know, you go there with your wife, and you better make sure your wife is with you because this dude, he's gonna make a pass at your wife after you just right. sold you the Kia. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm like, 
you got to be freaking kidding me. What's wrong with these people? Man? <laughs> Holy crap. Man. Stay away from them people, boy. Then. That's in Florida, then, folks. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, you, then, then you got the driving jobs. And you could relate to this one, Joe. Oh, yeah. So the, the driving jobs. You know, they give you a manifest and you give you directions and directions. Sometimes they're wrong, not, but not all the time. Right. Not down here. The school district. They give every every direction, every route I ever had had wrong directions. I get these kids to school like two hours late, man. Oh I don't know I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I am not kidding, man. I oh, I would make this out, up, man. My kids dude, are like, All right, I just made it to make school, this man. Two hours later, they get yeah. to school. It's time to eat lunch. Man. Yeah, I said I'll get him in school in time for lunch. How's yeah, that? I know what's going on, man. They're gonna be like, "Hey, Dad, you remember oh, that cartoon man. from The Simpsons, the bus driver? <laughs> that, that was the yeah, bus driver that drove us to yeah. school." <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. So oh, I told them, I said, "Look, you guys got a broken system." Here. Otto, that's the same. Yeah, Otto. Otto. Yep. I said so. <laughs> I told them, I will drive every single route that you have and fix them. You know what they were told me? Well, we have a computer program, and for the last eight years, it's just been printing up, and we haven't had a chance to update it. I said, so for eight years, you're printing out wrong directions. That's I said, weird, you know how man. stupid this is? And I'm telling you, these kids with the school of choice, you're not talking about maybe five miles. You're talking about... 15 to 20 to 25 miles apart you're you're driving all over the place man and wow. early in the morning there's no lights you can't see anything it is the most bizarre thing ever so finally what happened you know i got all po'd and i handed them the keys i says you're not putting me in harm's way man i'll tell you that right now i got a good driving record if i'm lost these kids are lost no way so they were embarrassed about that and, that, and they oh. still don't want to fix anything so I saw the girl at the, we have like the local news. It's called Wink News. So I seen her over there. So I did a U-turn. I pulled in that parking lot. I says, hey, I knocked on her door. I said, I want to talk to you. So she rolls the window down. I said, there's a problem with the school district and you need to check it out. Oh, really? So right away, she says, okay, give me your number and we'll set something up. And we'll so she interviewed me and I walked up on the news, man. So all the bus drivers, they're sitting there at the cafeteria. Next thing you know, they, they see, see you on the news, <laughs> reporting them, telling them how screwed, th screwed up things are. And my friend who's still driving, he goes, Dave, everybody was cheering you on, man. <laughs> so to the drivers, you're the local legend. But to the school district, you're public enemy number one. Yeah. I said, you know what? I, I, I wanted okay. to meet with those they, people. They, they, uh, they added you onto a footage of a dude falling off a bar stool. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, that's what it was. Dude, the guy it, that was selling the cars. They yeah, the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. It is so unbelievable. But other than that, it is it is cool down here. It really oh, is. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Well, the good thing is you you found you know another another uh, driving job that you like now. Oh yeah. It's, uh, yeah a lot more easier to deal with and not as much stress, man. And you know, guys, here's a sad reality as far as. You know, making a living as a musician, it's this is a phenomenon that happened everywhere. Everything is drying up because people lost so much money because of the internet. But see, YouTube is a catch twenty two. So if you're smart enough, you just put all your stuff up on YouTube, and this is the next way of of networking. And just think about how many times, uh, Joe NR two, you'd hear people tell you, "Well, we'll give you the gig, and it'll be exposure." Yes, exposure. Yeah. See now. Who in their right mind is going to fly in from Japan at, let's say, you know, uh, Riley's Rock House or, or Penny Road Pub? You know where Penny Road Pub's at, R2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you mean to tell me yesterday's has-been record producer is going to fly in from California, Mr. Daddy Big Bucks, to, to, to discover a guitar player at Penny Road Pub when the reality is in the music industry, rap is the big thing. No one in their right mind is going to invest the money in that. So here's where YouTube comes and just annihilates everything. Yeah, thank God. You know? That's why thank I God like uh, that's why I like doing my own thing. You know, like we was talking about earlier about uh, some of the guys you see in bands. I think Dave said that they look miserable. You they know, do. And, and that's why I just love doing my own thing, man. You know, it's just it just suits yeah, me man. suits yeah. me better. All right, guys, we got to get ready to wrap up. It's, okay, brother. It's, it's uh 
25 after uh, the hour. Uh, real quick, uh, y'all, 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 uh, yeah, there we go. Y'all go ahead and uh, give a plug for your channel. And uh, if you look in the description, folks, you will see links to these gentlemen's channel and the links below in the description of this uh, video. So if there's anything you'd like to, a uh, quick plug for your uh, channel. Dave, please go ahead. Oh, well, you know, what I would say, just subscribe to everybody. Support the community. There's so many good people out there, man. It's, it's, we have a good thing going with YouTube. We want to keep it going strong. So check everybody out. We, we know when you can, when time's, time allows it, go ahead and check everyone out. Absolutely. R2, how about you, my friend? That's right, man. Same here. Absolutely. Sub to everybody. Let, watch everybody. I mean, if you don't like it or not, give it a chance. Take a look at it. And uh, I just celebrated uh, my 300 sub subscriber. Uh, yes, I saw Congratulations. that, man. Congratulations. I saw that, too. And, uh, Congratulations, brother. Got a couple shout-outs for some people in there. So, Damn uh, right, man. Yeah, that was but awesome. But anyway, it's just, it was just to be uh, – to share the love to everybody out there. But, and thank everyone and subscribe and watch and – Subscribe to uh, right here, Dave Byron here, and uh, yes, our Joe Wins right here, that way. Joe Wins that I like, way. I feel yeah. like we're in the, the Partridge family here. The Brady, the Brady Bunch <laughs> going on here. Yeah. Oh, the Brady Great Bunch. Yeah. 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 Or, or or the Grady Bunch. You know, Sanford <laughs> son, Grady, Grady Wilson. Listen here, big dummy. Yeah. Oh my God. But that's awesome. I'm coming, thank Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming to join you, honey. Oh, my God. Hey, thank you all for being here. Dave, thank you for being thank here. Thank you, brother. Here. Thank you for jumping on. I know this was a, a whole different um, array of, of things here with this. Oh, this is awesome. I like this, man. With this platform. I thank, thank you for being here. R2, thank you for R2. jumping on, man. It's thank you. Great Brad, finally meeting you, R2. Nice to meet you, Dave. And awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, man. That was great. We got to do this again, man. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. R2, you're welcome anytime, man. That you thank want. you, brother. Thank anytime. you. Anytime. Thank you, Dave. And, uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody absolutely. out there watching this. Yes. Thank you all for watching. And uh, for Dave Byron and R2, R3 Locking Up, my name is Joe, and you're watching the Joe Ins Project TV, where guitars still live and breathe. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm out. Take care. Bye-bye.